November is National Prematurity Awareness Month. Nearly 400,000 babies are born preterm each year in the U.S., but there are some things that can be done to prevent that. Dr. Amanda Hutchins, a neonatologist at Baylor Scott and White, joins me now. Now, according to the CDC, there's some good news in the national preterm uh, birth rate is going down. In it is. It's been pretty steady between 9 and 11 percent in the past, currently about 10 percent worldwide and in the U.S. And Texas is about on average. So yeah. I, I'd love to I love to ask health professionals that deal with premature babies, what led you in that direction? Well, when we rotated through all the pediatric specialties, I was drawn to the NICU. Um, I, did, I didn't know if I'd be nervous dealing with such sick babies, but I loved it. The families are kind of in an emotional and a family crisis and it's it's wonderful to get to help them through that to teach a lot um, during that time and then of course to help the babies in their most vulnerable period of life there's so much to be done well and but so much uh, advancement has happened that's right in in the the age the gestational age of babies born preterm that are that are able to survive and that's even right. thrive that's right the Kennedys lost a baby at 34 35 weeks and then you said yourself um, saw babies at 28 weeks that didn't survive. And now we're intervening for babies at 23 and 24 weeks gestation and having relatively good outcomes. Yes, it, it is though so crucial to think about how that can be prevented. Right. Um, so so what is, what's the best thing for that? So prevention is important. Establishing early prenatal care is key. Mm -hmm. Checking in with your doctor, keeping all of your appointments, that allows moms to ask questions about their health and their baby's health, and but more importantly to allow physicians to monitor the pregnancy closer and detect any potential problems sooner. Um, there are some medications, something called 17P. It's a progesterone hormone injection that can be given to women who've had a previous preterm birth, and in about 30 percent of babies that second birth can be on time, or at least longer than, than prior. A lot of multiple births you hear about. That's right. Lots of twins. Yeah, <laughs> twins, born. triplets are in typically fact, born early. I have early. a friend who's, whose daughter is on complete bed rest. She's in the hospital, yes. Yes. you know, for weeks and weeks, mm -hmm. which, you know, so sounds like it'd That's be, hard. A, be a drag, yeah. but, but it's worth it That's right. in the long run. That's right. Bed rest is important for certain conditions. Um, if preterm labor is threatened or if mom's fluids have ruptured early, mm -hmm. a lot of times bed rest is important along with antibiotics to prevent it progressing to labor. Mm -hmm. So that's key. D Dr. Hutchins, if, if people want to learn more, how can they? get information. Sure. Them. Well, the March of Dimes has a wonderful website that's mm -hmm. very family friendly with a lot of stories about babies born at different ages and information and um, advocacy, advocacy groups and groups for families that have gone through having a baby in the NICU or just want to make donations or learn more about it. Do, you, do we have volunteers that even work? There? We do. We have volunteers that come through the NICU. A lot of Moms and dads can't be there all the time, so babies need to be held and mm -hmm. fed and some diaper changing and rocking, <laughs> and I'm, that, that's always good medicine for the soul, holding, oh. holding one of our sweet babies. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for all sure. you're doing Thanks for, for these tiniest ones among yeah. us, Dr. Hutchins. my pleasure.